Hello everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian, where I talk about everything unconventional yet unfortunately true, and today I'm definitely going to be talking about um, topics that fit into this category of just how manipulated the economic data has become at this point. And last week, uh, Michael Burry tweeted a very short but very insightful tweet and also a link to an article out there by the Wall Street Journal, and this really got me thinking and researching just as to how much the data has been uh, manipulated and changed in the last 40 plus years um, of just the government gradually shifting how they calculate a GDP, how they calculate inflation, and how they calculate unemployment, and how this has led to what I do consider the scam of the century. And I really do take that seriously. Uh, there are a lot of other scams out there, many of which I've talked about. I do consider this to be the greatest of all of them, though, just in how it has warped people's perceptions of how uh, the economy is actually not doing well for the United States, how uh, the data is actually much worse than what they are releasing. And uh, I do consider this, however, to be uh, reaching an inflection point in terms of people uh, perceiving this data. I do think that people are beginning to really question uh, the integrity of the data that is being released. Uh, specifically with regards to inflation, it is very, very hard to find anybody who still would say that, yes, I do think the Fed is honest and that the inflation that we're currently experiencing will be transitory. I don't think that anybody who really has to live a normal life and live in the real world, <clears throat> I don't think anybody out there would really be saying that inflation is still transitory as the Fed is still insisting upon. Um, and that is simply because that is really the only thing the Fed has left uh, to keep this extreme everything bubble at this point propped up is all they can do is continue to insist that their way of calculating inflation, calculating unemployment is not in fact uh, skewed and that you know essentially they have to continue this lie, this continuing lie that has grown in proportion over time. Uh, they have to continue that in order to continue the perception in people's minds that the economy is actually uh, doing better than it in fact is. And as you'll see, there's a lot of data out there, not just inflation, also GDP, also unemployment that has gradually shifted over time uh, to really paint a wrong picture in people's minds of how the economy is actually not doing well as it was back in the 1980s when this data began to be changed. So all this being said, this video was initially inspired by Michael Burry's tweet out there of essentially implying that the Federal Reserve is lying about inflation. I'm sure that that's nothing new in your minds out there, but I will really go into depth now on shadow stats as to just how skewed this data has become in the last 40 years. Okay, everybody, so here on shadow stats, they have several uh, data sets that they have compiled where they essentially use the same formula that the Federal Reserve and the government, you know, Bureau of Labor Statistics, that all of these organizations were using back in the year uh, 1980 to calculate inflation and unemployment and GDP. And as you can see from uh, all of these charts here that I will begin to show you, the data has gradually diverged from how it would have been calculated back in the 1980s until now. And this really does show just how big of a discrepancy this has become between reality and what uh, the mainstream media and what the government is reporting out there. And I'm not saying that this uh, shadow stats a way of calculating, you know, current GDP or current inflation or current unemployment. I'm not saying that this is 100 percent accurate. I do think it is, however, closer to the reality than uh, the, the modern way uh, that, say, inflation is being calculated right now. Because, um, you know, currently we're seeing inflation going through the roof in certain sectors. Um, pun intended with housing, that is the reality right now. Inflation has really picked up in terms of rent prices, in terms of housing prices. They have, uh, pun intended, gone through the roof in the last uh, two plus years but also in other areas as well in which uh, consumer price inflation does not include, such as food, uh, such as energy costs. Uh, inflation has already uh, exceeded, um, vastly exceeded what the uh, Federal Reserve is reporting for CPI. So in terms of um, CPI, 
um, this page essentially the CPI on the alternate data series tab here reflects the CPI as if it were calculated using the same methodologies in place back in 1980. And the reason why they go back to 1980 is this is really when the manipulation of this data started. Up until then, it had been a very consistent uh, formula that the, uh, all of these organizations had used in order to calculate a CPI or inflation and to calculate unemployment and uh, GDP. And while I do think some of this has likely uh, changed in terms of just how best to calculate inflation, um, like I said, I don't think this is entirely the best way to calculate inflation just because there have been some changes in terms of demographics, in terms of a technology in the last 40 years. But I do think this is much more uh, realistic than all, you know, all of the data that is commonly reported out there right now, which, um, if, if true, this uh, would be a gigantic a discrepancy. We would be seeing CPI roughly at around 13% right now as opposed to 5%, which is what is being reported. So uh, going over to unemployment, this also uh, just is an enormous discrepancy, even larger than CPI. Um, they calculate it, again, using um, the U6 unemployment, uh, which I, you know, I commonly refer to U6 as the real unemployment number because it includes everybody who you know, isn't looking for work. It includes um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, still reports uh, U6 unemployment, but it includes basically everybody who could be working but is uh, not working. Um, so uh, U3 unemployment really is uh, what they commonly report out there. It is uh, definitely not accurate. It's nowhere close to um, the shadow stats um, actual unemployment rate that they calculate. Um, so they, they the estimate is added, they, they essentially estimate um, the uh, long-term discouraged workers who were defined out of the official existence back in 1994. So again, a uh, change to how the government calculates their unemployment number. Um, they essentially attempt to include all of these long-term workers who, for whatever reason, uh, were cut out of the official uh, unemployment number back in the 1990s. So um, that is why you see a, a gradual rise in, um, in this unemployment number over time. Obviously, it gets significantly worse um, around the dot-com bubble and then uh, significantly worse around the uh, great financial crisis. And then it really doesn't recover at all there. And then with COVID and everything, it just massively spikes up. And uh, it's, it's definitely higher than where it's been in the last, you know, it's much higher than where it was even after the uh, great financial crisis. So that should be a really bad indication in terms of the overall economic health. Um, this all, all this data essentially indicates that the economy is far, far worse than what the government is reporting. And then going to the uh, GDP, their alternate uh, calculation for GDP. Again, this uh, really does show that GDP uh, has not d done nearly as well as how the government has reported. Uh, at times, it has actually contracted significantly uh, around the great financial crisis. They're reporting that it really did not recover uh, after that, it stayed roughly around 0 to 1%, even dipping down into the negative 1% briefly after the great financial crisis. And then with COVID, it went down you know, below a 10% contraction in GDP. And then right now, Shadow Stats is indicating that we're actually not in the positive yet. We're actually in negative 3% territory or so. So if correct, this would be a big discrepancy. It would be a big manipulation of data that has occurred in roughly the last 40 years in terms of what the government has been reporting, um, just in terms of economic statistics. And, you know, if anything... All, you can you can see this reflected in the earnings reports of companies out there in terms of the valuations being placed on companies. It's extremely dependent on interest rates and money stay, staying very cheap to borrow. And uh, if anything, this all of these uh, data points would indicate that interest rates should be much higher, and therefore the valuations placed on pretty much everything out there should be significantly lower. So all of this being said, I'm not saying that all of this data on shadow stats is completely 
accurate because I just don't know uh, how this could potentially uh, have changed in the last 40 years. Again, we've had so much innovation. We've had new technology come about. My guess, though, is that Shadow Stats is much closer to reality than uh, the official unemployment rate or the official uh, CPI you know, data that is being put out there. All of this being said, this is just me walking you through the alternate data available out there on Shadow Stats. Uh, you can look into it more if you want to, but I do think that this is more accurate than uh, the official data that is being released by the government, by the mainstream media, etc. So if you liked this kind of content, um, just consider smashing the like button for me. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed hearing this content. If you want to hear more, um, just consider subscribing to this channel. I do like to talk about uh, unconventional and uh, just in general uh, ways in which to outperform the crowd of investors out there. And in order to do that, you have to question uh, the thinking behind a lot of the commonly perceived notions out there. And so if you take a look at some of my past videos, you can really see how this has played out well for me. A lot of my videos still uh, have not come about yet, but um, just take a look at some of my past videos if you're a bit skeptical as to my success yet. And uh, basically, if you want to hear more, just consider subscribing, and I hope to see you again at some point.